Hello, my name is Colleen McNamara and I'm the Administrative Assistant for the Arts of Africa, Oceania, and the Indigenous Americas at the Detroit Institute of Arts. Like many of you, I've been spending a lot of time baking during the past few months of being at home. And so I was trying to think of ways to connect um, my love of baking and some of my favorite pieces in the DIA's collection. So today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to decorate cookies that are inspired by a few pieces in our collection. The first thing you'll need to do is to gather all of your supplies. You'll need a cookie of your choice. You can pretty much use any kind of cookie dough that you want. Um, as long as it can be rolled out relatively flat and thin. I used a very simple sugar cookie dough, um, but you could use a gingerbread dough, a chocolate wafer, or you could even use you know, a store-bought cookie as long as it has a flat surface. Uh, you can also do any type of shape that you'd like. I chose to do a combination of circles and rectangles for these cookies, but you can cut out diamonds, stars, whatever types of cutters that you have at home. If you don't have um, cookie cutters, you can always use a glass to cut out a round, or you can use a knife to cut out your rectangles. You will also need a large bowl of royal icing. Uh, I used three cups of powdered sugar and a quarter cup of warm water. And then I also added a little dash of almond extract, which I really like that flavor, but you could also use vanilla or lemon if you'd like a different flavor in there. You do want it to still be fairly runny in consistency so that you'll be able to pipe it onto your cookies. Next up, you'll need some type of food coloring, um, a piping bag, which if you don't have a piping bag at home, you can easily use a plastic Ziploc bag and you'll just treat the corner of the bag as your piping tip essentially. Um, and then last up you'll need some clean paint brushes. Once you have your station all set up go ahead and grab your icing and your piping bag and you're gonna fill up your piping bag with icing about a third of the way full um, and then you, you can tie this off with a rubber band if you'd like. Um, I usually just twist it several times so you don't have icing coming out of the end of the bag. Um, and then I like to hold it with my finger in the middle so then you can kind of clamp down the outer edges of it. Um, now for this, you're going to cut just a small hole. Uh, again, if you're using a Ziploc bag, it'll be the same idea. You're just going to use the corner of the bag as your tip and you'll just cut a very small hole. And then you're going to very gently squeeze your piping bag until the icing comes out. And you're going to use that to basically draw a line and create a frame around the inside of your cookie. And you don't want to go too close to the edge in case the icing starts to run off. But once you have your frame made, then you can go ahead and go back in and fill that with icing. So basically you've created a border that's going to help hold your icing in. And that's a technique that's called flooding. Uh, and that's just gonna create a really nice, smooth surface for you to do your decorations on top of. For the first cookie design, I was inspired by three pieces from the DIA's collection of Native American art. They're, these objects are called parflesh, um, and they are carrying bags that are made by the Northern Plains tribes in the mid to late 1800s. 
and I was especially drawn to them because of their bright colors and bold geometric designs. They're typically made of rawhide, either buckskin or buffalo skin, and they were used to transport food, tobacco, and clothing. The parflesh were mostly crafted by women and feature colorful shapes and patterns often inspired by their environment. So to create a cookie inspired by the patterns of the parflesh, we'll essentially be using the food coloring like a watercolor paint on top of the cookies. So I'm using a gel food coloring, which is extra concentrated. So I've watered them down a little bit. If you don't have food coloring or you just don't like you to use food coloring, you can make your own natural dyes out of everyday objects in your kitchen. So for example, red cabbage, spinach, turmeric, blueberries can all make great natural dyes. And in fact, the Northern Plains tribes that created these parflesh would have used similar plant-based or mineral-based dyes. Once you have your chosen colors ready to go, you can paint whatever pattern inspires you on top of your cookie. Use your paintbrush to create geometric shapes on top of the white icing. Try not to use too much water to avoid making the icing too wet. Make each cookie unique with different shapes such as circles, diamonds, waves, and spirals. Look around your home for inspiration. For our second cookie design, I've selected a painting from our modern European art collection, Bank of the Oise at Auvers by Vincent van Gogh. This work was painted by van Gogh in 1890 and depicts a scene of boats for hire on the river Oise near Paris, France. I've always loved post-impressionist paintings like this one in part because of the incredible texture on the canvas. The vibrant colors and movement of the water and trees in this painting will be easy to recreate with the texture of our icing. For this cookie, you'll need to divide out some of your white icing into smaller bowls to be dyed. Inspired by this painting, I chose to use a couple shades of green as well as blue and yellow, but you can really use whatever colors you like. You're gonna use your paint brushes to create small rough strokes of icing in different colors on top of your cookie. And then if you don't have a paintbrush, you can even use a knife to do this um, or a small spatula. You can create large dollops of the icing and use the end of your paintbrush to create a wavy texture on top of your cookie. So I have a couple up here that I've already done and you can see that because the icing is fairly runny, it's going to end up smoothing out into a relatively flat surface. So we'll go back and add some texture similar to the texture in the Van Gogh painting. So I'm just gonna clean off one of my brushes that I was using for the icing and I'm just gonna use probably my smallest brush to just make little indentations in the icing. For our final cookie design, I've chosen several Akan gold weights from the DIA's African art collection for inspiration. These gold weights are not actually made of gold, but rather brass, and they were used as standard units of measurement for gold dust, which was the primary trading currency in West Africa at the time. Gold is a central part of Akan society, representing not only wealth and status, but also spiritual energy. Early gold weights such as these featured irregular geometric shapes and patterns, likely influenced by the Islamic weights on which the Akan system was based. I thought these raised geometric patterns would be a great source of inspiration for a more intricate, piped style of cookie design, so that's what we're going to do next. For this cookie, I'm going to use white icing on a white background because personally I really like the monochromatic quality of the gold weights, 
but feel free to use any leftover colors from your previous cookies if you'd like a more colorful cookie pattern. First, I'm gonna scoop my icing into a fresh bag and cut a very tiny hole at the tip. And the reason for creating a very small hole is that we want to have a very delicate line that will replicate the raised edges of the geometric gold weights. So squeezing gently, pipe the icing into patterns of lines and dots on top of your cookie. You can do diagonal lines both ways across your cookie to create a lattice pattern, or you could make stripes in alternating directions. I always like to go back and add in some small dots to help fill in the empty space. But you can really have fun with this and make up your own designs. So that's it. Now you have three new cookie decorating skills to show off to your family and friends. You can also check out our website to explore our online collection and find more inspiration for your cookie designs. And make sure to tag us when you share your masterpieces on social media. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for supporting the Detroit Institute of Arts.